Hey guys, Andrews here, and in this video, I'll show you how to make this automatic killer robot. It works as a line tracer, and as soon as the lines hit our character, it will shoot and kill the player. In this video, we'll make the rotation system, and in the next part, I'll cover the line tracing system, which triggers the shooting mechanism. It's not a complicated blueprint, and it can be done with just a couple of simple notes. So let's jump right in and get started. I downloaded the model from Sketchfab and connected the legs so we have two different meshes and I can make the rotation system for the head separately. If you don't have any models, you can just follow the tutorial with a simple cube and you will be fine. Alright, now let's create a blueprint and here select actor. Let's name it robot and open it up. Here I'm gonna add two static mesh components and here in the details tab I'm gonna select the legs for the first one and the head for the other one. Let's scale them up to make them a little bigger and then let's drag the blueprint into the scene. The model has two eyes but I think having only one eye makes it look cooler so here I'm gonna add the cylinder and then assign a light material to it. Our level is moody and foggy so I don't care if it doesn't make sense here and as you can see it looks great in the scene. Next I'm gonna add the spotlight as well so it reinforces the light of the material. I'm gonna play with the actor and the intensity to achieve the result I like and also I want to add a light profile here to make it a little more interesting by creating this effect here. Also make sure they are both a child to the head static mesh so when we make it rotate they rotate with it as well. As you can see it looks great and now we are ready to make the rotation system. Let's open up the event graph and the first thing we need here is the event begin play. We want it to start moving as soon as the game is played so we are going to use the begin play event and then we want to set relative rotation for the head static mesh. So add set relative rotation and make sure the target is the static mesh we made for the head. Here we can set the value for the rotation, but if we do it this way, it will snap to its new rotation and we won't be able to see the rotation smoothly. Here we need a timeline, so let's add it to the event graph and what it does is that it outputs the values incrementally so the movement can be smooth and look natural. Let's open it up and then let's make a vector track. This here is the length of the timeline and impacts the speed of the rotation. Here in our case, 5 seconds works fine, but of course, based on your project, you can go with different values to change the speed of the rotation. Now let's right click here and add a key and then add another one at the end of the timeline as well. The first point is the value for the beginning of the rotation and I want it to start from minus 50 and obviously the time should be at zero. The reason I'm setting it on minus 50 is that I want it to move from here to here so it covers a 100 degree angle. If I set it on zero, it will go from the middle to the right side and half of the area I want to be covered will be missed. The second key should be on 5 and 50. It means that in 5 seconds it will go from minus 50 to 50 and give us the area coverage we want. Hit these icons here to frame them and now the last thing I'm gonna do is to select them both and hit auto to make this curve. What it does is that it will reduce the speed of the rotation at the start and at the end of the movement and it makes it look more natural and smoother. Okay, let's go back to the event graph and connect the timeline to the set relative function. Here you can see that it won't accept the floats we made and the reason is that they have different formats. So here we are going to add a make rotator node to translate the float into a rotation variable and now we can connect it to the pin. We also want the rotation to be around the z-axis. So let's disconnect this one here and connect the output to the z-axis and now we are ready to go. Let's compile, play the game and now as you can see it's rotating from minus 50 to 50 and works perfectly. The next thing we are going to do is to make it go back and repeat the rotation. In order to do that just copy everything here so we can make them work like a loop. 
the way we want to connect them is that after the first timeline is finished we want to start the next timeline and reverse it from end connect it to the set relative function and then after it's finished we want the first timeline to be played again from start that's how it should look like and now you can see that it goes back and forth between minus 50 and 50 degrees and works as we wanted Another thing we can add here is to make it stop at the end and wait for a second and then start rotating again. All we need to do is just add a delay node before the timelines are played and here we can define the duration of the delay. What this means is that when we play the game it will rotate from minus 50 to 50 degrees then wait for one second and then go back. Then it will wait for one second again and repeat the rotation. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. It looks great and we have done the first part of the job. That's it for this video and in the next part, we are going to create the line tracing system and the shooting mechanism. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.